All right, what's going on? You listen to King Camp and June Bay podcast and June Bay Me's message. And today's message is uh, summer school. We're in uh, the King Cam session, summer school session really quick. Uh, it's on African history and uh, African information. So um, we last few weeks, we highlighted a few key books. And since it's six weeks, I figured it'll be you know, short, the short readings, short, small books. Uh, they're small, thin books, but they're very powerful. So, um, and shout out to the fam out there in the diaspora in Africa, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, in Kenya. Uh, I know there's a lot going on in Ethiopia right now and um, uh, Senegal. So, uh, but without further ado, we're about to get to it. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we are in a different location today. Uh, we are in uh, the wonderful Soto Library. Uh, they were uh, the wonderful librarian was so kind to allow me to to hijack the space. So uh, just for a few minutes. So here we are. So King Cam with Jumei Podcast. That means message. That's Swahili for message. Okay. And once again, we're going to get into Stolen Legacy. That is a small book, a small reading. I think you can get to it and uh, get through it for like about a week, maybe two. And so uh, this is session two. If you missed session one, you can jump in on YouTube and get in on that. So uh, check it out. Here it is, King Cam Summer School Session 2. And the, the goal, the goal for these mini lessons, these mini lessons are to provide an introduction to African history. No, this is uh, not for everybody, but it is for everyone. What do I mean by that? Um, what I mean by that is there are a lot of individuals who are very knowledgeable in African history, right? Uh, it's very, it's not really for that level, but it's for that ground floor level um, for those who need to know the basics, right? This is like African history 101, right? Uh, but it is geared for everybody. It is designed to foster a life of learning and a life of understanding. So it's a brief introduction to African history. It's geared for everyone. It's designed to foster a life of learning. Uh, it will be once a week, okay, for about six weeks, okay? Short readings, short pieces of information uh, to go over a few readings from Black authors. So it's not going to be long, like summer school, in, in the real world, it's not designed to be for the whole semester. It is designed for, say, um, six weeks. So, uh, but it would be once a week. I'm looking at Wednesdays at high noon here. I know some people are eating dinner where they are. Shout out to the fam in uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, that I think it's about seven, eight o'clock their time. So um, maybe later. So, but uh, it's 12 o'clock noon here. So you can eat your lunch or dinner. And you can enjoy this. So, but we're going to go over a few readings from a few Black authors, right? And so, um, now, the objective today, the goal today is for us to identify and discuss major concepts in the book entitled Stolen Legacy by George G.M. James, right? That is a very good book. Short book, but it's a good one. So, we're going we're gonna to highlight a few things out of chapters one through four. I think that uh, I'm not going to read the book for you. You guys are very intelligent to do that. But there are, I would like to raise some key concepts and some key ideas that will uh, help us all think, right? So we're going to identify and discuss major concepts in the book entitled Stolen Legacies, chapters one through four. All right. Class recap. This is our agenda. We're going to go over the class recap, Stolen Legacies, chapter one through four. And then what's next? There is something for you guys to do. I don't just, you know, say a lot of words and do a lot of talking and then that's it. No, it's something for you guys to do also, right? So uh, last week we did class introduction, expectation. My expectation for you guys is to not give up. Don't quit. No matter what you're going through, what's going on in your life. I know there's a lot of things, some greater than others, but no matter where you are, my I expect you guys to not give up. There's always hope, right? And who remembers the three basic book suggestions? We're, talk, we're not talking about advanced. We're talking about basic. Who remembers the basic book suggestions? You can, you know, comment in the comment section or whatever, but who, who remembers that? Who remembers that? 
yeah, Stolen Legacy was one. I kind of talked about it, right? I gave it up. Introduction to Black Civ uh, to African Civilization by John G. Jackson uh, and the Black Man of the Now and His Family by our very own Dr. Ben, right? These are very basic. I know uh, over the last weeks I've been getting comments uh, on YouTube about other books, and that's fine, too. But when I'm talking about, say, a high school senior, when I'm talking about a high school senior who who needs help, who needs assistance, what they would do is say, hey, Mr. Cameron, what book can I read? These are the books I would suggest. These are my strong suggestions. Stolen Legacy, Introduction to African Civilization, Black Man of the Knowledge Family, kind of in that order. Kind of, and they they touch on different things though. They touch on different things. Stolen Legacy deals with Greek philosophy and uh, Egyptian mystery system. Introduction African civilization touches on the whole continent as a whole, and Black Man of the Nile deals with the Nile Valley. Right. So, big question. Here's the big question: What are some of the major concepts of chapters one through four? We're going to answer that in a few minutes. Right. So, so hold on. Now, like I said, we're going to touch on Stolen Legacy, chapters one through four, and chapter one. This chapter focused on the comedic mystery schools before it reached Athens. Okay, and guys, if you're if you're looking on YouTube, you see a little icon with a little a little finger. Okay, down with the with the pen that that that's signal that kind of lets you know this is something you can or should write. Right, I, like I said, I'm doing this even though this is on YouTube and things like that. I treat this the same way I, I would treat my my other students, right? So some of these things, or a lot of these things you guys are getting, um, I do here. So this chapter focuses on the comedic mystery schools before it reached Athens. And people from all over the ancient world came to Kinemet to learn various arts and sciences. Okay, before there was a Timbuktu, there was a Kinemet. So, um, they came, they came to learn, they came to get an understanding as to what's going on, all right? And so men such as Pythagoras got their training uh, in Kemet. Upon graduation, quote unquote graduation, they returned to places like Samos and went from there. The Ionians and Italians did not claim the authorship. Here's the thing, um, even though a lot of people try to claim that now, but the original people who lived in those areas didn't claim it because they weren't the true authors. It was the people of Africa. They were the authors, okay? Uh, because of the variety and volumes and the depth of knowledge, there was no way that one personal philosopher had have, have written this in one lifetime. There were volumes of books. There was libraries of books. There was a lot of information. There is no way. I know that there's some brilliant minds, brilliant individuals, we talking about things that will span lifetimes to understand. And so because of that, the depth of knowledge, there's no way, according to Dr. Dr. James, and I, I agree with him, not, not there's no way one person will write this in a lifetime. Okay. Who basically, you know, in a library setting, there's no way one person will write all these books. No, no. They may write a book, you know, they can add on to it, but no. This knowledge, of course, uh, from the mystery schools was passed down and it was added on from one generation to the next. It was passed down. This was a 500-year project, like somebody would say. It, it, it wasn't, say, 20 years. It wasn't. It was granny, my grandmother gave me this, my mother this information, my mother gave it to me, and so on. That's the way it is, and that's the way it was. So uh, the knowledge was given, was even rejected. Get this, y'all. According to the book, According to George James James and Stolen Legacy, chapter one, in chapter one, the knowledge was re reject rejected by Athens because it was seen as foreign. When people like Pythagoras and many other so-called philosophers that, that came and went, when they went back home with that information, it was automatically rejected because of the place of origin. It didn't belong to them. It was strange information, strange knowledge. So, they didn't, they didn't get down, right? So that's chapter one, right? And a little bit more on chapter one. Kemet was the epic center of knowledge, and this knowledge was spread abroad by the quote-unquote initiates. Yeah, 
the mystery schools, it, it it was it was the place to be. And the people that learned there, they were called the initiates. Ooh, yeah. It is, you know, we're not gonna get we're not gonna delve into the esoteric and 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 this symbolism of that. That I'm gonna leave that to the brothers uh on on different pages. We just historical information right here. The spread abroad by the initiates and the ancient mystery schools were chartered by um a Sarayaka, okay, the Grand Lodge of Luxor or Waset. So the mystery schools was a mystery because it wasn't open to everybody to the public right it's just like even though the high school is here even though the middle school is in your area everybody just can't walk in there right you have to be what enrolled you have to be on the roster things like that so and every mystery school was chartered by the grand lodge of waset or luxor which was in the south for the for the fam who really wants to know it was located in the south all right so these mystery schools were there, but the only the only way you can get it was through Waset, the South. All right. Now places like the Cal the Chaldees had mystery schools from Kemet, Greece had mystery schools, Persia, and so on. Many others along the Mediterranean world, and those who became proficient, they would then become master or a teacher. So that's one thing about the education system, even uh, before um, the Western world became the Western world, so to speak. The education system was designed to make a person and not just a product. So the person, it, they were able to, if you taught this person science, they was either able to do the science or to teach science. That's what it is. If somebody uh, was trained in the arts, they were either going to be an artist extraordinaire or teach other artists. It wasn't just art for art's sake, right? So those who became proficient, they would then become master or teacher. So once again, they these mystery schools got charters from the Grand Lodge of Waset. These Chaldees, places like the Chaldees, Greece, Persia, and so on, right? What's going on, fam? All right. Now, they were skilled enough once again, I said that before, they were skilled enough to teach the content to others, but get this, the knowledge could not be published for the public. If you was going to write something down, that stuff was going to stay in Kemet. It was not going to leave Kemet. It, was, it wasn't going to leave. So whenever they published the information, it was not publicly made for the people. In order for you to get that information, you have to go to that school. Okay, so, all right. Now, recap on chapter one. What is the main idea of chapter one? Now, can tell me, or you can type it, you know, in the comments or whatever. Just remember, what's the main idea of chapter one? Will be one thing you you get from Stolen Legacy chapter one, and upon getting their training, what city did Pythagoras Pythagoras return to? What city did he return to? Was the main idea of chapter one? And what city did Pythagoras return to? And why was the knowledge rejected by Athens? Why was the knowledge rejected by Athens? Okay. Now, Osirica established mystery schools in which locations? That's another question. I just gave y'all the answer. It was three. It was three. All right. Now, that's chapter one. And why weren't the knowledge published? I forgot that question. Why weren't the knowledge published? So when y'all get, get time, get a chance, go ahead and answer those questions. All right? Now, chapter two. Hmm. Chapter two deals with war. The Stolen Legacy. Chapter two deals with war. What, what was happening? What was happening there? The environment, according to James, the environment was too unstable in Greece and Athens to develop the knowledge and then uh, uh, then the philosophers on their own. So a lot of people would assert that these philosophers had all this information all along, but with war going on and fighting, there is no way. There's no way for them to have all of this information at one time and then be able to produce it in, in that fashion and still be and still be epic like that. There's, there's no way. 
So it dealt with the environment. It was unstable. Think about now. Think about gentrification and so on and all the movement that's happening all around the world. Uh, there, there are scholars all around the world, but they can't set root. So therefore, they can't do what they normally would do. The culture can't be maintained. So they have to pack up and go, right? So the only place that was stable like that for, for a long period of time was Kemet. So... This chapter two, the environment had internal and external wars. People were infighting, throwing hands, and there was external. The Persians was invading Greece and Athens, uh, the Pel Peloponnesian Wars, the, uh, the, the leagues. Everybody was beefing all these clans in Greece and Athens. They was fighting. So there was no way for a philosopher to put pen to paper and say, hey, I'm going to deal with this theorem real quick, and arrows are flying all over the place. No, it's too unstable to develop the knowledge and then develop philosophers on their own. That's, that's the environment in the Mediterranean world. Then it didn't produce that, y'all. All right. So what was this is chapter two. What was the main reason why philosophers could not be developed in Athens? War. It was too much. But in Kemet, it wasn't. They really they had, of course, Kemet had some infighting and whatnot. There were some things, dynasties rose and fell. But the culture, but the knowledge continued. That, that's the difference. So chapter one dealt with the mystery schools, right? Chapter two dealt with war. And let me see. See if I can do one more. Do one more chapter and then I'll turn you guys loose. Oh, yeah. We got to do this. Chapter three, the comedic mystery schools in Stolen Legacy. Chapter three dealt, deals with the mystery schools and their, their education system. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to do that. Okay, so chapter three, Brother James asserted the Greek philosophy schools were an offspring of the Egyptian mystery system. What do you guys think? You got to, what do you guys think? Like, comment, subscribe. What do you guys think? I know, I know what to think, um, but we have to understand the prevailing view is that these, these Greeks, as well as many others, this all of a sudden, out the blue, had it, right? It just came out the sky, and boom, they have this information. But Brother James, according to the book, Stolen Legacy, asserted that the Greeks, the Greek philosophy schools, were an offspring of the Egyptian mystery schools. Okay, true or false? Yes or no? Let me know. All right. Now, is he right or wrong? Hmm. I think he's right. I think he's right, Um, just based on not just his book alone, but just on research of other books and the way the Nile River ran and went from South and Central Africa to 4,100 miles north. So it was passed down and in, in Greece wasn't even there yet. They didn't know what their hands were before they was even able to write anything. But, you know, I digress. So chapter three, mystery schools, the kinematic mystery schools not only dealt with the tangible sciences, but the esoteric and the symbolic. Okay, the overall goal of the school is to liberate the soul from the body and become godlike. That was the goal. It was to become, you know, more, to become better, right? So some would call it the Nitaru, okay? And this is why the king would don the title Sara, or son of the sun, son of light, or son of God, and et cetera. So when you hear his names, like um, Ramses uh, the second and so on, there would be a title. It's not. I don't have it on my slide, but it, there would be uh, a title right in the middle of his names. It would be a bird and a a little a disc of the sun that represents the son of Ra or son of God. So it would be uh, um, his his given name, and then Siron between that, and then Ursa Ma'at Ra, Sitip Ra, Amari Amun, and so on. So that. That so they had to go through that process also. You couldn't just say, "Hey, I'm king," and that's the reason why a lot of just on the side note, that's the reason why a lot of the so-called kings that came in the later periods were not respected or they were not recognized as the insut biti or the king of the north and south because they didn't go through the process. Number one, number two, their mama didn't come from Sudan or Ethiopia. Well, we'll talk about that later. 
All right. Now, because, <laughs> you know, pictures don't lie. I'm just saying, you know, that's what that is. But now, um, but they had to go through the process. And the pyramid text would state that the Insut Biti or the king of the north and south will become imperishable stars. Will be that's the ultimate goal for them to be a star, to be, to be great and to be awesome. And that is the thing. You know, you hear it on Lion King and many others where they talk about you see those stars, they represent the ancestors, and that's where they get it from. They get it from Kemet, they get it from this information. But yeah, so the goal was for them to liberate the soul from the body and so on. Now, uh, the mystery system is like a modern university, but according to Dr. Asara Kwesi, uh, it can take a person up to 40 years to gain this information. You couldn't just do this in 12 years. You just started. That's why a lot of the Greeks were disheartened and they got turned away because, bro, you just started. You don't, you, you're not you're not qualified. You're not certified to do this yet. And so on my slide, we have Ramses II and his father. He's going over the king's list. He needs to know who the kings were. Yes, he will be king, but he needs to know who the ancestors were. He needs to know what they did, not just their names. So some people can wrap off a lot of names, but what did they do? What, what made them great or what made them trash? You know, that kind of thing. So yeah, 40 years of knowledge. Why do you think it would take that long, y'all? Why do you think it would take that long? I know that there are some leadership positions in the United States. You have to be a certain age to even attempt to, to uh, be selected or elected or whatever. Uh, why is that? You know, I know for sure, like after my son graduated, yeah, I'm 42. My, most of my kids are, two of my kids are, are grown now. You know, they graduated. So I don't have to be the soccer parent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got one more, but you know, he's a he's a freshman. I got a few more years with him, but I don't, it's not a lot of ripping and running. So yeah, so why do you think it would take that long? 40 years. The mystery system had three grades. Okay, three. Once you enroll, once you get vetted and they receive your application, whatever it is, the mystery system had three grades, three of them, right? Yeah. The mortals. That's the first. The intelligences, you've been to school, you you know how this goes, and then the sons of light. That is when you you have all that you need to have, and you're able to do what you need to do. And you're about in your late thirties into your forties, and you're and keep in mind that a lot of these people started when they were children. Let that sink in. See, most of us wait to these kids or five and six that we're already years behind, right? So, yeah. So the mystery system had three grades. It took them 40 years. And so if you see in the writing icon, write this information down. You may need that. You may need that. But the mystery system was like a university. The reason why it was a mystery is because it was none of their business most of the time. The only people that needed to know was the people that needed to know. You know, uh, the reason why so many of the British um, people were able to get so much information, like say King Tut, was because the Nubians and the people of Aswan was there to share some of that information. You know? So they just didn't know it offhand. They had to ask questions. They had to, to get to know the people and that's the way it is. But yeah, so... All right, a little bit more on chapter three. Dr. James said the neophyte was required to manifest the following soul attributes, right? And if you see the picture on YouTube, you will see it. Pictures don't lie. You'll see the leopard skin, uh, the people of Kemet wearing the leopard skin, and the people of Congo wearing the priestly leopard skin. The Kemetic culture was an African culture, but we'll talk about that later. Now, but the soul attributes were the control of thought. Hmm. Control what you're thinking and how you think. Sometimes perception will hurt us. Yeah? It will get us. Control of action. Should I respond or no? The other one is fortitude. Bravery, right? Fortitude. Temperance. Evidence of a call to priesthood or, or the kari heb, right? The priesthood. Do you, what's next for you once you're done? Right? 
And, you know, over time, the elders will be observing you and based on your behavior, this is what you will be doing and this would this what will happen and things like that. So, yeah, the Kari hair, the, the priesthood, there's different kinds. And then also we have to understand that there was 42 gnomes there, like 42 neighborhoods within in Kemet. So that that's a different thing altogether. So, yeah, you may be from Fayum. So, but the language is the same, but they may have a different process. Yes, you went to the mystery school, but now you got to come see us. Right? That kind of thing. Now, a little bit more, more of the soul attributes. Really quick, control of thought, control of action, fortitude, temperance, evidence of calling, right? Uh, more soul attributes, freedom of resentment. You can't be in your feelings, right? You can't be always uptight. Do you listen to respond or to get an understanding? I see that a lot. A lot of people will, will say things. Did you read what I said? Did you hear what I said? You know, that kind of thing. Freedom of resentment. Confidence in the power of the teacher. Do you believe in what the teacher is teaching? That kind of thing. And, do you, and, and this is good. With confidence in one's own ability. Do you believe in yourself? There's a lot of people that are good, that are great, but they don't believe in themselves. Because how can, if you can't believe in yourself, you certainly can't teach anybody else, right? And you certainly can't be the master of that art form or that thing and you don't believe in your own ability. All right? That's why I tell people, if you're good at something, be great. Don't play with it, right? If you like I tell my students, if you're good at math, if you love math, be a mathematician. Stop playing, right? Readiness, last one, readiness or preparedness for initiation. There's always another process. Are the elders are looking at you saying, hey, bro, uh, been here for a minute. Are you ready? They will know. They're not going to ask. They're just going to, you know, hey, get ready. They're going to think. So the soul attributes, one more time, control of thought, control of action, fortitude, temperance, evidence of a calling, freedom of resentment, confidence in the power of your teacher or master, confidence in your own ability, and be ready for the next, next, the next level, okay? That kind of thing, right? And remember, chapter one, the ancient mystery schools were chartered by the Grand Lodge of Reset, and the mystery schools were founded by the initiates. You couldn't be a random person saying, hey, bro, I'm an initiate too. They said, no, you not, right? You know, that that's everybody couldn't do it. Various schools or lodges of instruction were developed, and the priests were called... In, um, we're called the Kari Heb, right? And the priest called the Greeks children. When they got there, they was but children. They didn't know what was going on. And they didn't know what was happening, right? So, yeah, you have to sit and learn here. You have to get in on, on this. If you want to know what you want to know, you need to sit here and listen to this story. That You need to listen to us, right? You can't just do it. Now, more, more on the mystery schools. They there were several, but the biggest one was in Lusor. And it was to develop a person, but it was designed, and this is a side note, it's a, it was designed to be a human body. Okay, the feet was at the very front, but the head, the you know, the the pylons and so on the, were and or the columns represent the middle section of a person's body. And the very end where the Holy of Holies, where the mind is. And they were aligned in such a way to where um, every, you know, the solstice and the stars, or, or even if the sun aligns to it a certain way, it will light that room up. Okay. So they didn't just build buildings just to be building them. It was, it was designed to build people in the minds of others. Okay. So so that's that's what it is but in, in like i mentioned before it wasn't a 20-year process so there's no way that the greeks said uh, i did this there was no way because these temples took centuries to make they didn't do it overnight it didn't happen in one day right so if if these uh ipids or temples ipid temple were took centuries and, and they would span blocks. There's no way one dude would say, I have all this information, right? So chapter three dealt with the mystery schools. Let's recall Brother James, 
asserted that the Greek philosophy schools were the blank. Yeah, there's a fill in the blank question. So when you guys see this on, on YouTube, yeah, there's a fill in the blank question. I am that teacher, right? What is the goal of the mystery school? To take one person from what to what? What well, name the soul attributes? What were they? And where was the Grand uh, Lodge of, uh, of Luxor was set located? I mentioned it was in the South. And I think it starts with an M in English. That's a M. Okay. And chapter four, lastly, chapter four deals with how the Egyptians educated the Greeks. It basically recaps chapter three. Um, but I encourage you guys to read that. But, um, you know, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate your time and you guys coming out. You listen to King Cam and Jumbe podcast. And Jumbe means message. And today's message is Stolen Legacy, chapters one through four. All right. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and answer the question. But I do have homework. I do have homework. What is that? What is that? There is some homework. Whenever you get to YouTube, it will be a quizzes up. It will be only open for like a couple of weeks. If you're on quizzes.com, it is seven. The code is seven two five zero zero two four eight. That is the code. Okay, I told you guys it was something to do, right? It, you just wasn't going to just sit here and listen, and and nothing happened. No, 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 no. That ain't how it works, right? <laughs> you gotta get in on this. And tell tell a type three things that you remember about this session. Three things that caught your attention. All right. But that's all I have. And once again, you listen to King Cam with Jumbe Podcast. And Jumbe means message. Today's message, once again, is Stolen Legacy, chapters one through four. Much love to the family in the diaspora. Um, all over. Um, it's so many people, uh, so many people that support from all over the place. If I name one country, somebody else is going to get mad. So I can't do that. But thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you later.